Uh, I want us to go straight to the word uh, so that we can read and sit down. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, I read from 1 to 6, just the familiar place uh, so that we may continue this foundation. Joshua, chapter 1, from verse 1 uh, up to verses 6. Now, the Bible says, after Moses, the Lord's servant died. Now, I'm reading from a version that is called NET, New English Translation. I picked it because there's something I want to pick from there. After Moses, the Lord's servant died, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Get ready. Cross the Jordan. Lead these people into the land which I'm ready to hand over to them. I'm handing over to you every place you set foot, as I promised Moses. Your, uh, your territory will extend from the desert in the south to Lebanon in the north. It will extend all the way to the great river Euphrates in the east, including all of Syria, and all the way to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Verses 5, no one will be able to resist you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not abandon you or leave you alone. Be strong and brave. You must lead these people in the conquest of this land that I solemnly promised the ancestors I would hand over to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for a beautiful, beautiful morning. And Lord, you have begun to speak with us. Father, you spoke to us, O God, in the first service. And Master, now we are in the second service. I pray in the name of Jesus that you shall take preeminence, take charge of our hearts, of our lives. And even for me who dispenses this word, I want to pray that I shall be under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that, Father, we shall have no distractions in the name of Jesus. Somehow, you shall settle us, O oh God, to receive from you that we may be able to advance and go over and possess the land that you not only talk to us, oh God, but also to Abraham and the patriarchs in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that in this place, somebody shall receive something, O oh God. A master, one shall be restored, another shall be healed, and for the breakthroughs shall reign. I give you honor, thanks, and adoration. We have prayed in Jesus' name. We may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. First of all, I want to thank Gio for, uh, for honoring us. Today, is, uh, he is present with us, so he can be able to mark. He has the marking scheme. And uh, uh, it's a very comfortable thing uh, to know that uh, you have uh, your mentor uh, around, and therefore you can advance. Hallelujah. We had a powerful first service. Pastor Joseph uh, spoke to us. A very interesting message. I don't want to preempt it. Please go and check the YouTube and the Facebook page. It's a powerful message, and God is going to bless us. Now, I have gone back to where we have been. You know, last year we were thoroughly blessed as we explored synergy. And this year we are exploring advancing for conquest as based from the, uh, from the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verses 2. And I also... I went to the same place because there is something that uh, God helped me to, to get, and I believe that God is going to bless us as we go into it. Now, from this text where we get the theme uh, of this year, this message, the one that I have read from verses 1 to 6, was spoken not to the congregation, but rather to an individual. I'm going to ask us a few. I think that is important to note. You know, it was spoken to an individual. Now, and three things come out. Now, this is the reason that I, that I took NET. Let's go back to verses 2. Verses 2 says, Moses, my servant, is dead. This is God speaking to Joshua. And he tells him, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, the way this one brings it out is three things. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. And I'll explain a bit about that. Then the second thing is, cross the Jordan River. In my Bible, it has an exclamation. And then the third thing is, lead these people into the land which I'm ready to hand over to them. Now, you know, the place of get ready is a place of you have dependent, dependent on the, on the person who was your leader for a long time. Or you have depended on this job for a long time. You have depended on what you knew for a long time. You have depended 
on something, or maybe your family for a long time. But now, but now, but now, get ready. Praise the Lord. As Pastor Joseph was uh, preaching in the first service, I thought he was going to preach my message because he talked about separation. And as he was talking about separation, he helped us understand that separation is not only death. When I say if you were. There is also the positive side of separation, where you are separated to achieve your goal. Now, a few days before, maybe before Moses had died, Joshua had never thought in his mind that he could lead a people. But here God is telling him, get ready. Hallelujah. You know, there are a few of us that are in church today, and you have been with us for a long time. But you have never embraced responsibility. I'm here to announce to you that in the course of this year and in the actualization of advancing for conquest, there shall be some separation. And it is not for bad. In fact, you are the one that is going to embrace that separation. Because if that job comes and they tell you that you have to go to Madagascar and they are giving you some good salary, they are also taking your family, why would I not go? When I was away. Advancing for, and if it has to happen, then get ready because we are advancing into mighty things, into great things, and into good things. So Joshua is told, get ready, organize yourself. Hallelujah. Organize yourself because I'm sending you, and uh, you are going to go ahead of these people. Now, in other words, he was being told, it is your responsibility. We had a powerful Kesha. And, uh, you know, one of our sisters was giving us a testimony of how she has been in, in KU and how God used her in that place. She was telling us it was not possible to regularly come to church. But even there, God used her in a mighty way. She was separated. When I was a favorite. And she was separated for a good... It's not all separation that brings about, you know, tears. But once in a while, even that good separation may come through tears. So get ready. And it's the same uh, thing that is translated in other, in other Bibles as arise. It is now your turn for responsibility. The second thing is cross the Jordan. Now this is where I want us to dwell. Our pastors, especially at Gio and Reverend Joyce, they have given us a, a powerful foundation in the place of uh, getting ready. But today I want us to talk about, uh, you know, to talk about uh, crossing the Jordan. In this sermon, I would like to dwell in the second instruction. The first is get ready. The second, cross the Jordan. And the third, lead the people. These instructions were addressed to Joshua. He was the leader. He was the one to rally them for conquest. And who is addressed in our times? In our times, God is not addressing congregations. In those olden times, as we saw, the instruction for one was also the instruction for all. It was communal. When Israel, one person sinned, the whole congregation was punished. But in our times, in our very times, it is a very individualized instruction. Now, we are running with this, advancing for conquest. I can assure you, for the church that is GCI, this shall be surely accomplished. Amen. Amen. Advancing for conquest, it shall be accomplished for the church. Because we committed to God all the time. We have seen, we have reference. For the last 33 years, there are things that have been committed for GCI as a ministry to God. And they have been established. But what about you? That's right. Amen. So that we are not just advancing for conquest as a church. We are also advancing for conquest as individuals. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31 verses 33 may help us to shed light to that. Now, that one, uh, 33 and 34. The Bible says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Now, this is a prophecy from the mouth of, uh, of Joshua, uh, I mean of Jeremiah rather, uh, talking to the Israelites, says, for this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel. Indeed, it's talking about the times of Jesus and after. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them. It shall not be in the temple to be read. It shall be where? Within their hearts. 
I'll put the, the law within them, and I'll write it on their hearts, and I will be their God. Note, I'll be their God is not the collective God. It is the individual God, and they shall be my people. Then verses 34 says it well. It says, and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor, and each, uh, each uh, brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I'll forgive their iniquity, and I'll remember they are seen no more. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I am advancing for conquest. Yes. And if that one does not understand, you can tell the other one in Kiswahili. Uh, Kasamba has not interpreted for us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did you hear? Nina Songa? Amen. Please note that. That came from the bishop. It has even uh, some grace there. Now, as, as last Sunday, as we were talk, uh, talking, as uh, uh, Pastor Joyce was uh, ministering to us, we understood that, uh, you know, the underestimated eye, a very small, you know, defined by acres. In fact, Jericho, which was bigger, was nine acres, according to what a reverend told us. So I might have even been smaller, but they under underrated that. But what was their downfall was the sin of one man that is called Achan. That was a communal thing. But in our times, we want to advance. Now, I think this we can, uh, we can refer to a conversation that Jesus had with a man, and that is found in the, the book of John, chapter 3, and verses 3 and 5. Now, of course, you know, Nicodemus, representing uh, the order of the old, came to uh, Jesus asking, what must I do? So, Jesus said to him, uh, truly, truly, I say to you, unless, now it does not say a county, neither does it say a church. Praise the Lord. It is what? One. Talking about you, the individual. Unless one, so you could be five of you in the growth center, and one of you has chosen to be born again. The others will be left, there, but that, that one will attain and that he says, truly, I, I, tell, I said to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can go to verses five. Just go to verses five. Verses five says, Jesus answers, answered, truly, I said to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And I know I did not give you uh, the title for my message. The title for my message is crossing. Jordan for conquest. Amen. Crossing Jordan for conquest. Now, a scripture that you know, John 3.16 says, uh, what does it say? Yes. Whosoever, in other words, that one individual amongst many who shall believe in him shall inherit eternal life. What God asked Joshua to do in crossing the Jordan was something very hard. And actually, as I was meditating on it, I realized that God, now not just God, even your boss does not ask you to do something unless it is hard. Praise the Lord. If the boss asks you to do something, two things about it, it is hard, and it is important. Praise the Lord. Is the things nobody tells you to do. We don't even tell you to, you know, begin eating food. We can bring the food. We can tell you the food is chakula imeandaliwa. But we don't tell you begin eating food. It is the easy thing. Praise the Lord. For Joshua to be sat down, what God was telling him was something. I don't know whether you appreciated it. But it was something very, very difficult. Actually, heaven invested it invested so much in Joshua, so much so that God did not send an angel. He came down. We are not told whether Joshua dreamt or saw a vision. We only know that Joshua was spoken to by God. It was an onerous task. Israelites knew how to make boats because of the life in Egypt. You know, they, had, they, they, they lived near the Nile and therefore they could make boats. They could make books, but remember, Nile had crocodiles, eh? so they would not swim. So when they are confronted with Jordan, they can make boats. But did Jordan require boats? 
No. Understand, first of all, this is a river which has just come from the mountains. Maybe it even has waterfalls down there or rapids. What do you call rapids? It is not a very good environment. Then we are told it was at the end of April. Uh, I think uh, it's called the, uh, the month of Nisan or something like that, the, the, the month of April. And therefore, what was happening, those that understand the northern hemisphere, that is the spring time. And being the springtime, the ice is melting in the mountains, and therefore Jordan is flooded. Indeed, the, the Bible records that Jordan was flooded. And uh, therefore, telling Joshua, you must cross these people to the other side, was not an easy task. Unless God helps you. Unless God helps you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, for Joshua and the Israelites, Jordan was yet that biggest obstacle they had to overcome. For them, the only way to possess the land was to cross that insurmountable Jordan. And we too have to, a Jordan, we have to identify a Jordan that we can, uh, we can cross over. Now, I've said, between you and your dream, between where you are and your dream, between where you are and your promise, between where you are and your pursuit in life, between where you are and the promise of God, is an obstacle like Jordan. When I saw the I would like you to go and meditate on that. Eh? Just put yourself in the shoes of, uh, of Joshua and think about Jordan. First of all, you have one million people or they are about. Could be 600,000 or even more. A great crowd. You never let them. You are both, you know, <laughs> let them for 40 years. These are people you do not even know how, how they are. And you have been told by God of heaven that you are helping these people cross to the other side. Let me tell you, it's one of those places that you can easily backslide or go back. <laughs> now, there are two things that I found out. When you are given a big task, it triggers two elements in your life. Let me call them elements, uh, for lack of a better word. And I want us to look at these two elements that, it, that, uh, you know, that this triggers in your life. And this is going to help us to be able to know what we shall confront, uh, confront with in this year of advancing for conquest. Actually, I feel that this year, this year is going to be great. It's going to be powerful. But there are a few things that you shall have to overcome. Praise the Lord. Advancing for conquest. That means there is some resistance somewhere. There is something standing against you. Now, the first thing, the first thing that that big task, that big promise, that word of God uh, triggers in your life that you have to overcome is something called fear. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the reason that the whole of the year 2023, you never led anyone to Christ. Look at your neighbor, tell them nothing. Not nothing is a word, just look at them. <laughs> Amen. I got a definition, a, a definition from, the, from um, the dictionary, and it says that fear, this is very good, is an unpleasant emotion caused by threat of danger. And then I added there, real or imaginary. <laughs> Amen. An unpleasant, I mean, fear has not been anything to entertain. It has never been anything. Fear. Have you ever slept in a, in a place when you are alone and you are thinking about all the things that could go wrong in that night? Yes? You know, from... Uh, Maybe you have gone up country, maybe you have gone uh, somewhere, you have sent for work, and you have that, and, and you don't believe him in the house that you are, you are wondering, could snakes come from, you know, from, or could some <laughs> unpleasant emotion caused by what? The threat of danger, whether real or imaginary. Most of the time, it's real. Let me tell you, brethren, the people who advance are the people who conquer fear. Praise the Lord. 
And we at GCI, as individuals, we are not just advancing for the church. These programs of the church shall continue. We shall actually achieve far much more than we have expected. But about us, we must advance you know, and conquer fear. It is said, fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. And it is true. If you don't have faith, you have fear. It is as simple as that. I want to add another statement that fear is the manifestation of the absence of rema. You can internalize that. Rema is basically revelation. When you read the word of God and it talks back to you, that's what we call rema. It's the word that you write on. Fear is the manifestation of the absence of rema or revelation. I want to read uh, to, to, to brought something from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verses 6. This is instructions uh, uh, to Timothy by Paul. And here it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Uh, let, let's read this one. Uh, ESV. For this reason, I remind, you, I remind you to fan into flame the gift. Some of the gifts here, are the ember is going down. If it's not dead, flame, uh, no, into, uh, into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of, of hands. Uh, go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit, and it says here, not of fear, but of what? Of power, of love, and of self-control. Brethren, we need to overcome the fear that we have. And fear is the manifestation of the absence of of Rema. So much so that even when pastor tells you that, you know, God is going to come through for your life in the next two months, and then you ask pastor, you know, it is also good to but sometimes believe in us also. Yeah, we are friends of God. Amen. We are friends of God. When you have faith, when you have faith and trust, which is actually the remedy for, is the remedy for, uh, is the remedy for fear. If you have faith and trust, you shall be able to surmount. Now, Philippians 4.13, being the remedy for that, it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Let me tell you, whatever it is that God has spoken to you, or whatever you have put uh, you know, in your mind to do or to accomplish in a season, in a, in a week, in a month, in a year, or even in a season, that shall come to pass if you are able to trust in what God said and what he promised and even what you put down for yourself. Romans chapter 8 and verses uh, 31, it says, What then shall we say about these things? If God be for us, who can be? Fear is the limiting factor to all pursuits in life. We want to advance. We want to go to school. We want to go uh, to get married. We want to do businesses. We want to, uh, to build our homes. We want to take our children to the next level. But one of the things that we have is fear, so much so that we cannot write up something down concerning what it is that we desire to do. But I say fear. It's the reason that unbelievers somewhere in October Somewhere in August, come together and they come out with a strategic plan. They don't, do, they don't discuss things that are easy. They discuss things that are very difficult. A company that is doing one billion comes together and as the managers congregate, they say, we are going to do 2.5 billion. From where? And the economy is going down. But you know when you put those things together, even fear, you are able to overcome it. When I was a few that is a wow. How much more for us that believe in Christ? Do you know it is possible for you, plus the three others in your county, to help build the church or the sheepfold before Geo comes? Yeah, God can give you contracts that are unsolicited. God can give you opportunities that you did not ask for. You can become the chairman of a corporation, Nahuku Liza, and you don't have a relative. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But one of the things that is limiting us is something called fear. It is the same thing that confronted Joshua. But thanks be to God, Joshua had God to encourage him. But we also have the word of God and that word that was spoken to Joshua so that we may be able to put ourselves or to place ourselves in a place that we shall overcome fear. Fear is the limiting factor. And if we overcome fear, we shall do extraordinary things. I think I lack uh, salesmen. Salesmen are the most motivated people. Salesmen in the house? Salesmen are the most motivated people. First of all, they go and the, the boss of the institution gives them, uh, you know, what do you call them? The, the, the targets, huh? The budget and the targets. And the targets are always off. Last year you did 100 million and your boss tells you, uh, we have seen the market is, uh, is coming up very well, so we want you to do 325 million. I just did 100, and I broke every bone in my life to, to achieve 100. What about 325? And it says, you know, <laughs> and they say, your commission is based on the closing of, your bonus is, you know, on the closing of that. But because salesmen are also believers, and we have many here, they believe in it, and they also believe in God. They put themselves down, they come up with a plan, and somehow, by the end of the year, it is not 325. It's actually 375. And they are given a bonus and a, a fly out to and fro. So the next time the boss says now, we have moved the budget or the target from 375, 325. Now we are saying it is, it is 600 or 700. He has the confidence. Amen. We have the confidence. God has done a few things some supernatural things in our lives. It is our reference point. And even for Joshua, he could look back and see. In fact, one of the things that uh, they were told, as I did to Sihon, you know, king of Sihon and all, king of Bashan, that's the same thing that I shall also do to those people that are ahead of you. So therefore, go over Jordan and help these people possess the land. I also realized, Kumbe, it is not Jordan alone that you have to cross. It is Jordan, and immediately after Jordan, after you have done your best, and you have crossed Jordan, here comes Jericho. Praise the Lord. So we are advancing into this, but let me tell you, as we advance to this, know that God is placing another. For now, our whole focus, 100%, is on this. But I can tell you, as soon as you advance for conquest, something else is going to be coming. Because we cannot remain stagnant. Indeed, we did synergy, but we did not stop there. We have come to advance in Buana Yeso Sifiwe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I even went off my notes. <laughs> now, the second thing, I said the first thing is fear that you have to confront. You have to confront fear. The second thing, and this is uh, very key, is unbelief. The first one is fear. The second one is what? Yes. Tap your neighbor. Yeah, he has understood. That is to tell them unbelief is a bad thing. Now, unbelief, simply put, is absence of faith. Unbelief is what? Yeah. Hakuna. <laughs> unbelief is an absence of faith. Complete. There is no, there is no faith there's no faith in that. Now, there's a scripture that has blessed me over time. Mark chapter 9 and verses 23. And somebody explained it, and I think uh, we can go into it. Mark chapter 9 and verses 23. And verse 23. Mark 9. Are you there? Or oh, I can read mine. Okay. What does it say? Uh, this is a story of somebody who needed uh, Jesus to... Uh, you know, to help, to help him in healing. But this, uh, this statement says, and Jesus says, uh, said to it, if you can, and then it says, all things are possible for the one who believes in what? What does it say? For the one who? I think this is very important. The Bible here does not say it is possible for him that believes in God. It says it is possible for him who believes it is possible. 
Let me tell you some of the greatest innovations we are having are not being done by believers in Christ. It's just people who believe this thing is, is possible. We have a reference of, or, or maybe we, we can talk about Elon Musk and the, some of the others who believe that somehow, somehow there is a way. Even the leaders of great nations and leaders of movements, they only believed that it was possible. They did not believe in God. I want to tell us, most of us believers, we don't believe that we can get an eighth in Nairobi. An eighth of an acre in Nairobi. You have never even tried. I'm not telling you to try, but praise the Lord. Let me tell you, you God can open doors for you. Yes, you may have left school in Form 1. It is possible for you to go back to school and start from that Form 1. And in the fullness of time, you can be a PhD holder if that is your desire. It does not mean that because you left school 10 years ago that you cannot go back there. It is possible for him who believes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I know in your circle of friends, in fact, you have had maybe three circles of friends. Because the first circle of friends all got married. And now you had to look for new friend of, uh, new circles of friends. So, now it is 18 years since you desire to get married. I have come to announce to you, you can get married. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, there should be some people cap capturing that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For him who believes. Now, unbelief is a lack of faith that yields compromise which is sin. I'll say it again, unbelief is that lack of faith that yields compromise, which is sin. Um, you know, as, as I was meditating on this, something came into my spirit. Uh, you know, when you're going for a trip, you have something that you're doing at home, maybe you're uh, you are going to meet your fox, and therefore uh, you put uh, your f uh, fuel on your, uh, on your Prado or whichever car, and then you're cruising. As you're cruising, somewhere and along the road, somebody flags you down. Now, kuna mambo inakugoja wapi? Kule nyumbani. And so you try to explain and you say, I'm a growth center pastor. Uh, they don't understand what that is. Uh, you, you tell them you're a pastor of a church. And be a Biblia ilo nasoma inasema, give unto Caesar. What is Caesar's unto? You know, they quote those scriptures, eh? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, na hapa, ukona pesa exists. You have even, in cash, you have 5,000. And this person, according to your knowledge, is not looking for a lot of money. He's looking for only what? Miatano. Huh? Miatano. Peke yake. And then you are released and you shall be on the, on the road. So, you stay there for 30 minutes, unajaribu. Unambia, officer, umenisumbua sana. <laughs> Let me tell you, that is the condition of many of you. I want you to repent right now as I'm preaching. Because many of you are like that. I want to tell you that God is always doing something in your life. Praise the Lord. God is always doing something. And let me tell you, the process of God, the process of God is not like you. David was anointed when he was you know, when he was, was a young man, the, the, the scholars tell us that between that time and when he became a king, could be well over 10 or 15, more than 15 years, or 10 or 15 years, until he became a king. But there was a process inside. Do you know, just by you not giving that bribe, uh, bribe you may be preaching a higher gospel than giving the bribe, uh, the bribe. Maybe God just wanted to showcase his grace. Upon people. I remember one day, I was going to Ongatarunga, not long, long, uh, long ago, maybe 2021 or so. And I was going to Ongatarunga. Uh, those that know Ongatarunga, as, just as you get into the shopping, there are policemen that stop there. Kumbe, my, my vehicle did not have 
hii bulb ya break. So as wakati nimempita even as mama, hata he has now decided he's not even going to look at anything else. Makosa ameipa. Makosa ni nini the brake light is not showing. Do you know how much a brake light cost? It is 50 shillings. How many? 50 bob. So akaingia kwa gari tukaenda hapo uh, police station. Kaambiwa nini? Nikajaribu kuji explain. Ni mchungaji. Eh. Eh. Hata niko na maombi jioni. Actually it was a Tuesday. It was on a Tuesday and I desert so all that went to the deaf fears. I went to the OCS tried to explain my case. Uh, at the end of it, I had to give a bond of, um, is it, I think, 3,000. I gave a bond of 3,000. But the whole day is wasted. The whole day is wasted. Then tomorrow I was told, please come here very early because the court will be in procession and, uh, and uh, you'll have to, you have to be early. So I came. By 7.30 I was in that police station. Cases in Asomo Sangabi is a traffic. Karibu sa sita. I've been there. Now, I also didn't know, Kumbe, when you, you come, you also become a habusu. So I came, Nikawe Kwandani, the first few minutes. I was a normal human being with my phone and all that. After, you know, some, all the Matatu drivers are there. Nikatolewa kiatu moja. So the policemen are there, you know, once in a while when I require my phone, they are telling me, hmm, hey, hamuja achili, hamchungaji. Of, of course, ni kukejeli, eh? You know, it, it's, a, it's that mockery. Wachilia mchungaji. So, <laughs> so I don't have my need. So we were, we were taken to the virtual court, and we did then. Kumbe, this virtual court, I didn't know. The virtual court, after they said uh, I have to pay 2,500, somebody has to go all the way to Gong. I mean, Ongatarungai. Somebody, and it's not myself. So, mimi ni karudishwa sasa. Now, I'm actually, wanaitu wanini mahabusu wakweli. I'm not a... I am a guest of the state now. Because see, the, the case has been passed because it's either you pay the fine or you remain in custody for maybe a month or so. And therefore, it is only at around five, six, the next day that I finished. What was the cost? It was just a bulb of 50 shillings. How much do you think that uh, policeman Arikuan Ataka? Let me tell you. <laughs> I hope it's not an experience. <laughs> It is important. Let me tell you, even there, just even not by preaching, it is enough for people to know there are people, there are righteous people who are still standing. You do not have to compromise. But this comes because of unbelief. Amen. That you do not, that you do not understand that God could be accomplishing something. Maybe the gospel has been preached to one of the policemen there. Maybe hata nyule anandikanga. But they need to see that there are people who stand for the truth. And on account of that, I may not know, maybe a man is convicted. Or even those wale walikuwa mahabusu with me there. Praise the Lord. So I was released after waiting, uh, after wasting some 48 hours. Whatever I had gone to do, I did not do the previous day. And I could also not do this second day. And I was so discouraged the other day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, here the Bible, uh, he have said, if you believe, the, prep, the process may take longer, but it is higher for the gospel and the kingdom. Unbelief can be caused by familiarity. There is also the familiarity. You know, I've seen so much of how things move in the, in the presence of God, and therefore I'm not, I'm not going to wait. I know the things of God are very slow, but I want to finish up this business. So, some of the times, pengino likuwa naenda kuunda deal, na umeshikuwa na polisi. Do you know God may be protecting you from losing 100,000 or a million shillings or something like that? Praise the Lord. The process is important. There is nothing that God does not know. The fact that you have been stopped by the police and you have not been able to talk to them and they have not released you or any other thing, you do not have to compromise. It happens in the workplace that for your promotion, for your engagement, you need, you know, somebody says uh, he is asking a favor to sleep over with you. Let me tell you, it might just be that, but you contract something that you are irreparable from. Praise the Lord. We do not have, and this is caused by unbelief. Now, the Bible talks 
in uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verses uh, 58. It talks about Jesus uh, going back to, uh, to Capernaum. And it says, uh, I'll just read that one verse. It says, and he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It is possible that God is not working miracles because you don't believe these things can happen. These are the two things that you will have to confront. Hebrews chapter 3 and verses 17. The Bible talks about the children of Israel. They had something to possess. They had something to gain. You know, it is, you know, it is important to know that the people that inherited the land of Canaan were actually not any of the people that left the land of Egypt. This was a whole new generation. But why was it? Hebrews 3.17 says, And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned? Unbelief brings about sin. Whose bodies fell in the wilderness. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to those who were disobedient. So we see that we were, they, were not able, they were unable to enter because of unbelief. I can guarantee you, we are not advancing to conquest unless faith is built in us. Two things that you shall be confronting. You shall be confronting fear and you shall be confronting unbelief. Now the Bible says uh, one of the scriptures that we, we shall be uh, repeating in this place very often, Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Yes, we are, you understand a few things. You are maybe even an expert in what you do, but don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your paths. It is important to know all things are possible. Now, for the remedy, Psalm 119 and verses 11, I think this is where uh, we shall be beginning to close. Psalm 119, verses 11, not one. Verses 11. What does the Bible say? I have stored up your word in my heart. So that what? In other words, so that unbelief may not be resident in me. Praise the Lord. I've stored up your word in my heart so that unbelief may not reside in me. Sin, you know, unbelief, not believing God, his word is, uh, will bring about, uh, will bring about uh, unbelief and it will be seen. These two impediments can only be overcome by faith. Meditation in the word of God will raise your faith to counter the rising Jordan and the subsequent wars of Jericho and AI if it comes wrong or whatever else may be thrown on your way. Faith for us, must be a constant. It must be the thing that we refer to. It is therefore important to listen to a, a someone like this, to read for yourself the scriptures, but more to internalize that word, especially in a season like this that we are doing prayer. Praise the Lord. We want to meditate in the word of God. We want to be able to talk to, we want to, want, we want to, to talk to one another. In those olden times, people would give testimonies. Unajia kwamba, asubuhi mnipokuwa na soma mstali, huu mstali ulinenea. Amen. Do you give testimonies? Oh, yeah, two people give testimonies in this church. Testimonies are important because why we don't give testimonies is because there is nothing resident in us. Actually, very many of us, if you ask your neighbor which scripture he read, not today, ask him, what did you read yesterday morning? Praise the Lord. Eh? Amen. Don't get distracted. <laughs> Don't get distracted. Avoid, avoid familiarity. If God did it on one, in one way, he can do it in another way. Remember, God separated the Red Sea. And how did he separate the Red Sea? By striking the waters. But this is also Jordan, which is water. How did he separate? He said, let the priests go ahead. And I think that was a very powerful miracle. 
Because as the priests were holding the Ark of the Covenant, they knew God cannot disappoint himself. So they most likely were expecting to walk on water. They did not. They went in, but the, but the water separated. It is good not to have familiarity. In other words, you have seen it happen. When you come here, God can just speak to you. With the same preacher who preached last week, he can speak to you. You need also to journal. Do you know what a journal is? It's a notebook that you keep, but not just one for writing, one that you refer to. Hallelujah. Because I know uh, many of us write down. I, want, I don't want you to, to lift up your hand. I want you to lift up your, your hand in your heart. So those that write and never go back there. There are many of us. Just like you did in school, you wrote, you, uh, you wrote and never went back there. You need a journal where you write what God has told you. Either through personal devotion or through a word from his servants. In the last five years, has God ever spoken to you? I'm not talking about five months. I'm talking about five. Do you have something that you are running with? That you can say, this is what God spoke to me about my life. And it is important. It is in your devotions that God speaks to you. And when you come now to church, we amplify that. By the way, the word that is spoken here, it only amplifies what you have already heard from God. God will speak to you through his word. You know, something, that, an impression, but maybe now when you come here, the clarity is given either by somebody who was praying for you or somebody who speak, uh, spoke from the uh, pulpit. So can you say that God has spoken to me? This is a word that God spoke to me five years ago, two months ago, at the beginning of this year, or even yesterday. Do you have something? We are in a season of prayer. It is not too late to listen from God. Yes, the church is advancing for conquest. Are you advancing to any place? Because we may advance. Nakupe tulikuwacha. And you are in the place. Even we go to the next theme. Naveto likuwacha hata you have not advanced. You have stuck in the same place. You can get, you can get even out of this service and meet with God in a very powerful way. I want to speak to somebody who has been with us for a long time as you are winding up. You have been with us in this place for a long time. But fear and unbelief has protected you or prevented you from receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are here. Everybody knows that you go to GCI Church, which is a Pentecostal church. They even know that you lift up your hands, but you have actually never given your life to Christ. I want to tell you, this is the day. When I ask you, Sifiwe, Romans 6.23 says, as we are standing up, we can't be standing up standing. As we read this, Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is, oh, you know, sin has wages, eh? And what is it? For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me tell you, it is good to associate yourself with the church, this one or another one. But I want to tell you, when you hear his voice, because he is speaking to you, overcome that fear. One of the things, is maybe you came with a friend, but you wouldn't like that friend to know that you can bulge by the word of God. Let me tell you, we are not budging. E ourselves, God confronted us. Many of us here, God confronted us in our comfort, just like where you are. And we give our lives to Christ. Let me tell you, we have never regretted. And you shall not be regretting when you enter into this fall. We want to encourage you. We want to encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. You'll be able to worship God, as we say, in truth and in spirit. Maybe you are even with your husband here. Or your wife, you're not born again yourself, but you are together with them right here in the church. We want to tell you this is the day. Would you offer your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? There is much to achieve in the year, but why should you achieve but lose your own soul? Why should you benefit and get the whole world, the, the Bible asks, and lose your very own soul? Today is an opportunity for you to receive Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.